Welcome, uh, this is the course on dealing with materials data. We are going to discuss the collection, analysis and interpretation and uh, we are using R to do this uh, data analysis. In this uh, uh, section, uh, we are going to use R as a calculator and plotter. So, we are going to use R for understanding data, how to plot data and how to uh, interpret data and so on and so forth. Uh, but before we do all that, I just want to show you that R can be used simply as a calculator and plotter. Okay. So, we will take some specific examples uh, uh, from simple material science and engineering and uh, try to use R to do some calculations and uh, plotting. Uh, so, like I mentioned earlier, R is an interpreted language and so you can use it exactly like a calculator. You type in some computation and you will immediately get the answer. And so, here are a couple of examples that I want to do. Um, homologous temperature uh, is a concept. Uh, so, it is a temperature of a material as a fraction of its melting temperature and uh, homologous temperature is a fraction of uh, uh, the, the temperature of material as a fraction of its melting temperature in Kelvin. Okay. So, if you know the melting temperature of a material in Kelvin and then any temperature of interest if you keep that material, what homologous temperature that corresponds to? Uh, basically what we are saying is that homologous temperature is a way of normalizing for the melting temperatures. So, uh, otherwise it becomes difficult to interpret uh, results for example um, and, and it is very funny. For example, if you take ice, uh, if you are at uh, minus 1 uh, degree Celsius where uh, you might think that it is very cold, but uh, for ice it is very high temperature, right? Uh, low temperature for ice might be minus uh, 20 or minus 40 or something like that. So, we want to get rid of this uh, uh, dependence on where the melting temperature is. So, in Kelvin scale, so everything is positive and we are going to say the given temperature divided by the melting temperature of the material. Then you can compare different materials. For example, if homologous temperature is 0.5 for two different materials, then both of them are at a temperature which is 50 percent of their respective melting temperatures, right? So, this concept is very useful. So, let us say that we want to calculate the homologous temperature. Uh, let us consider aluminum which has a melting temperature of 660 degrees Celsius and lead which has a melting temperature of 327 degrees Celsius, right? And let us say both of them are at room temperature and let us assume that the room temperature is 30 degrees Celsius what are the homologous temperatures of aluminum and lead, right? Uh, so, this is what we want to do. Uh, like I said, uh, we have the nodes. So, this is the nodes and the nodes gives you all these commands, uh, but I am also going to um, type it so that you can work with me. Uh, Let us say that uh, temperature of melting for aluminum is equal to 650. Right. Temperature of melting for lead is equal to 327. So, you might see in my notes that I have this colon. So, this is a habit uh, from writing uh, scripts in Octave, uh, but it is not essential. So, you, you do not have to put the colons. And uh, the room temperature uh, and, and uh, so we need to um, transform all these uh, uh, temperatures which are in degree Celsius uh, to Kelvin. So, I am going to add a 273 to them. So, T naught is 273 and I am going to call this uh, room temperature that is 30. And so, let us calculate the homologous temperature for aluminum which is nothing but, um, oh okay, before that. Uh, room temperature in Kelvin is nothing but room temperature plus T naught, right? Okay. Now, the homologous temperature for aluminum is nothing but, so melting temperature of aluminum and we need to convert it into Kelvin and uh, melting temperature, the homologous temperature for lead is the same thing. So, I can actually do this, I can use the up key to get the previous command and modify it, right? Uh, so, it just needs these two modifications. So, homologous temperature of lead 
is nothing but room temperature in Kelvin divided by the melting temperature of lead in uh, Kelvin. So, now you want to know what is the homologous uh, temperature of aluminum, it is 0.33 uh, right and what is a lead uh, assuming that we are at room temperature and room temperature is 30 uh, for aluminum it is 0.33 and for lead we are already above 0 0.5 right and that is what is shown here also okay. Now, suppose you want to calculate the temperature uh, which is uh, 0.5 homologous for aluminum uh, well it is rather simple. So, you multiply by the so, so 461.5 right. So, that is the homologous temperature for aluminum uh, 0.5 homologous temperature for aluminum. So, uh, this is the first example. So, we are just using it like a calculator uh, except that it is a more advanced calculator in the sense that you are giving variable names and you can deal with these variable names and whenever you want the answer you can just ask uh, for the computer and for R to give you the values and it will give you those values. The second problem okay, so I said that uh, it is both um, calculator and plotter. So, let us take another problem okay. uh, this is a problem on diffusivity. Diffusivity of materials is typically given in terms of uh, the pre exponential constant D naught and uh, the activation energy Q. If these quantities are given uh, the and, and if you know the temperature in Kelvin at any temperature uh, the diffusivity is D naught exponential minus Q by RT. R is the universal gas constant which is 8.314 kilojoule per mole per Kelvin. Uh, we are assuming that this Q is given uh, per mole, but if it is given per atom this will just become KBT okay where KB is the Boltzmann constant 1.38 in 10 power minus 27 joule Kelvin. Um, okay, so, so, this is the um, uh, diffusivity and so, typically values of D naught and Q are tabulated and then for any temperature then you can calculate the diffusivity. Let us take a particular system, uh, so this is copper, this is for self diffusion of copper that is copper uh, diffusing in copper itself. The D naught is known to be 10 power minus 4 meter square per second and Q is 196 kilo joule. And so, let us say we want to calculate uh, the diffusivity at 400 degree Celsius and also plot the diffusivity as a function of temperature from 200 to 600 degree C. So, we want to do two things, one is that given these values you can calculate diffusivity. So, this is just a continuation of the previous problem, uh, you can use R as a calculator you can just put these values and then evaluate uh, the value at uh, 400. So, you will get that and you can also uh, plot diffusivity because we said R can also be a plotter. Uh, plotting means we have to have a table, we have to have temperature from 200 to 600 and for each temperature corresponding to 200 for example, 250 for example, 300 for example and so on, you also have to get the diffusivity. Once you have this table of temperature versus diffusivity then you can plot it um, as usual okay. So, that is what uh, we want to do next uh, and uh, so here is my uh, notes okay. So, this is the diffusivity problem. So, let us start uh, doing it. So, and this problem I want to do uh, in the um, um, our studio because uh, then it is easy to see the um, see the plots. Okay. So, what do we want to do? We know that uh, D naught is uh, uh, nothing but uh, uh, and Q is given to be um, 196. Uh, remember this is kilo joule, uh, so I am going to make it uh, joule by multiplying e power 3 okay. um, 
and uh, then R is 8.314. Okay, so, we wanted to calculate uh, D at 400, but remember we need to uh, turn it into Kelvin because temperature is in Kelvin. So, D is nothing but D naught into exponential. Okay, so, so this is another advantage with uh, R studio. So, we did not know whether there is a command called a exp, but uh, you know it is there and if you go there uh, it even gives you the information uh, log computes uh, uh, logarithms by default natural logarithms and, uh, and, and so on. Okay. So, so, you have the information about exponential. So, this is one minus uh, q by rt right r into t is uh, 400 we wanted to calculate and t naught ok. So, I do not know if it is visible to you, but if I take the cursor here it highlights here, if I take the next one it highlights uh, here and if I take next one it highlights here. So, all the parentheses are complete, uh, so you can calculate. And as you can see you know the, the values what are the variables we have defined and what their values are. So, even without printing D here I can already see that it is 6.1 10 power minus 20 right. So, it is it is already come, but of course, you can just say D and then it will give you that uh, answer. Uh, but, but our studio environment is nice because as you are doing you can see what is happening. Now, we want to plot right. For plotting, we want to get the uh, temperatures from 200 to 600. So, I am going to do, let us say temperature, okay. and we want to increase, let us say 10 degrees. Right. Now, capital T we want which is nothing but this T plus T naught. Okay. So, as you can see T is temperature 210 to 20 etcetera and then uh, capital T already made it uh, into Kelvin 473, 483, 493 etcetera. Once we have it, uh, so we can calculate D uh, which is nothing but uh, D naught into exponential minus Q by R t right and uh, um, okay, so let us calculate d. So, it is available. So, the d values are given. Now, what do we do? We say plot uh, t versus d and here is a plot. Okay. So, you can see that uh, the, the diffusivity of course, it exponentially increases uh, uh, with, uh, with increasing uh, temperature because it is minus 1 by T. So, as you can see that uh, 400 to 800, uh, 473 to 873 Kelvin, um, uh, 200 to 600 degrees Celsius, the self diffusivity of copper, this is how it looks. So, by um, so, it is similar here and uh, um, okay, I think there is a mistake in this, we will correct it, Q should be in kilojoules. So, okay. so, of course, the next thing that you want to do, let us say that I want to write a small script. Okay. And what is the script is going to be? So, I am going to say d naught equal to 1 e power minus 4, q is equal to 196 uh, um, kilojoules and r is equal to 8.314 and uh, then we can uh, repeat the rest of the commands exactly as here uh, t naught is equal to 273 and T is equal to um, 200 to 600 in 10 and capital T. Now, you see when I type capital T, it highlights in a different color. 
that is because um, for true and false there are logical values. So, the T is already uh, right true and false are represented by T and F. So, I cannot use capital T. So, I am going to say T in K. Um, T in K is nothing but T plus T naught. Okay. Uh, now, we can say uh, the diffusivity is nothing but T naught into exponential. See that is other nice thing uh, if I open a parenthesis it closes a parenthesis by itself by R into T in Kelvin. Okay. Um, so, we have calculated and then we want to say plot uh, T comma D. Okay. So, now I am going to save this file save as and I am going to save it in scripts and let us call it as copper diffusivity dot R. Um, yeah, replace. Okay. Now, I can run this right, this is a script, I can run this, so I will get the plot. There is also another way which is to, uh, so suppose I, I want to run it in the R console, so I do not have this um, right. So, uh, I have to go to So, where was this I have to look at and dealing with materials data scripts So, you have to give the full um, path, but the nice thing is if you know the first few letters and then press on tab it completes, it auto completes. So, you do not have to type the entire name of the directory for example. So, if you do Uh, Let us go to this uh, uh, okay. So, we know what the error is. Okay, yeah, I should not have. Yes, save. Yes, so we are able to get this and uh, so uh, you can also use uh, the script and use the command source to run it. I just want to show this uh, clarification when we were running this uh, cu diffusivity dot r uh, we did get an error message and we glossed it over. I just want to show you how that error comes about and how to fix it. Uh, my cursor is on this line d is d0 exponential minus q by r and the temperature in Kelvin. So, if I just say run 
as you can see it means run the current line or selection. So, if I if I have selected something then it would uh, run the selection or if the cursor just stays there it will just run that line. So, if I now say run it says error object D0 not found that is because we are just trying to execute this line and it does not know what the parameters are D0 for example, it does not know or T in K it does not know things like that. So, to avoid that you can say source and if you say source then it sources everything which means from the first line it goes through. So, you can see that the plotting is done. So, this is something that we have noticed and when I was going back and forth between the R console and R studio and sometimes when I was trying to uh, execute instead of source I used run and because run meant just that line it gave that error. On the other hand you can uh, mask everything and then say run and then it will execute it or you can just say source and then it will execute it. So, either way it can be done. This is just to show you some of you might have been wondering what is that error message and why it came about. So, this is the reason it comes about. So, when you the source and run are close to each other. So, when you do you have to be careful as to what you are doing or if you notice the error message then you know that you have been using run instead of source and so it is just running one line instead of running the entire script. So, so this is just to explain why you saw some strange error messages in the session, thank you.